Hi, this is Susan Broder from Speak Languages and Travel the World, here to help you improve your English with minimum effort and maximum benefit. I hope you can understand me <clears throat> because I have a rather hoarse voice. I have quite a bad cold. But today, I'd like to give you the 10 top tips to pass your F. CE, so your first certificate speaking exam. This video is just about the speaking part, but I'd like to give you the 10 top tips to be able to pass. And to do that, I'd like to share uh, a document with you that will help you do so. So I hope you can see this document and um, it's named 10 top tips to pass your exam. So what does part one consist in? So part one gives you personal information uh, for about two, three minutes. So the examiner will ask you personal things as such as questions about your family, your studies, your hometown, your free time activities, your job, future plans, and you'll be asked to do the spelling of a word, usually your surname, very probably only your surname, but it's in any case a good idea to practice your spelling. So tip number one is practice speaking about yourself. For example, think about a question such as, how do you spend your weekends? And practice talking about it. Or what facilities are there in your hometown? And practice talking about it. So you can do that very easily, even driving your car or whilst you're cooking or whilst you're having a shower. So you don't really need to, to take time off, especially to practice to, uh, speaking about yourself and your free time activities, your job, etc. This is something that you can easily practice. So, then uh, practice spelling, the, uh, sorry, spelling your name and your surname, just like that. Uh, it has to just come off the bat. You have to be able to do it just very easily. Uh, also prepare to answer questions on your preferences. They might ask a very specific question such as, tell us about a book you really like. And then you'll have to be able to explain in just a few words why you like that particular book. You don't need to go into great detail, but uh, it's good if you um, imagine questions in advance and that way um, you can, uh, yes, practice your answers. Also, a film you really enjoyed. So um, it's just good. Uh, it's a good habit to practice speaking about yourself, your hobbies, your interests, your family, your job, the town where you live so that when they ask you, you'll be extremely confident, you'll be able to speak fluently. Then tip two, don't just answer the questions, but add information. Let me give you an example. Do you enjoy eating out? Answer with how often? Yes, I do. I usually go out once a week. Maybe say who with. I usually go out once a week together with my best friends and explain what you do. But we don't always eat at the same restaurant. And why is that? Since we like trying all different kinds of food. Now, if you've noticed, that's a very informative sentence. It's quite long and it's given a lot of information, but it's not a particularly elaborate sentence. So um, it shouldn't be too complicated. Don't forget to use connectors, but, however, even if, because, since, although, etc. For example, what do you like doing in your free time? Since inline skating is my passion, I love working out every day together with my teammates. However, we sometimes train on bikes because it relaxes our muscles. So you've given information on how often you do the activity, who you do it with, what you do and why, and you've used connectors at the same time. So, um, yes, don't just answer the question with a yes, I do, no, I don't. Add information. They'll stop you if you're going into too much detail. So part one is over. Uh, I forgot maybe to mention that, yes, part one lasts two to three minutes. Then uh, there is part two, which is often called the long term. 
Uh, the total uh, exam of part two is four minutes, but it's divided between two, you and your partner. So part two consists in comparing and contrasting two photos, giving your opinion, you've got one minute to do that each, and then briefly answering a question about your partner's photo, and that's only 30 seconds. So tip three is listen carefully to the instructions the examiner gives you. And if you um, feel that you haven't quite understood, it's better to ask them to repeat it rather than guessing. So in doubt, ask, would you mind repeating the question, please? Practice with a stopwatch and time yourself. You have to do that quite often, so you learn to compare, contrast, and give your opinion all within the time limit of one minute, which isn't very long if you have to give all the things, all the details they ask for. So in the first second, 30 seconds, remember not to describe. That isn't what they want. They want comparing and contrasting. So uh, you could, for example, give a general um, comparing and contrasting by saying, in the first photo, we can see people having a picnic by the river, while in the second photo, we can see people eating outside a cafe in a city pedestrian zone. They both show, but in the second picture. The first photo is not as, as in the second. This photo reminds me of, however, that one reminds me of. So you spend about 30 seconds comparing and contrasting the photos in general. And if you notice, it isn't a description because I've described two similar or different parts of the photo. So tip four is to use the next 20 seconds to speculate by describing their feelings and giving reasons for your ideas. So they seem worried or they look worried because they're frowning. I'm not sure whether. In the first picture, they look as if they're having an argument while in the second, they seem deep in discussion. So speculate means you don't really know. You're just imagining what, you, what they feel. So that's why you have to uh, demonstrate that you're not sure. Explain what they're possibly or probably doing and why. They're probably taking an important decision because they look very serious. Then you have the last 10 seconds in which you can express your opinion. In my opinion, they're trying to convince each other, and it reminds me of when I'm arguing with my parents. So you don't have time to repeat yourself. Be careful you don't repeat yourself, because uh, 30 seconds uh, for the second part isn't very much either, and you have a total of one minute. So you must practice with a timer, with a stopwatch. Tip five instead is to listen carefully to the question about your partner's photograph when he or she has finished his or her long term. The examiner will ask you a question and you have 30 seconds to answer it uh, in a relaxed manner. But if you didn't understand, again, you can ask, I didn't quite catch that. Could you repeat it for me, please? Okay, so let's go back and summarize these first five tips. Part one is giving personal information. So tip one, practice speaking about yourself. Uh, tip two, don't just answer the questions, add information and use connectors. Tip three, in the long term, Compare and contrast the two photos. Don't describe them, but practice as often as you can with a stopwatch because you only have one minute, 30 seconds to give the general picture. To, uh, and then in tip four, 20 seconds to speculate on what they feel and why they are doing what they're doing. And the last 10 seconds to express your opinion. And tip five, to listen carefully to the question that the examiner asks about your partner's photograph and to answer it. Then we go on to part three, the collaborative task, which lasts three minutes. So 
Now, part three uh, consists in discussing five as aspects of a question. There's usually a central question, which in my example is, what are the pros and cons of communicating in these different ways? And then you have five different <clears throat> examples of communication, for example, a face-to-face -face meeting, a letter, uh, or an online chat, a video conference, or a lecture. And you have to discuss with your partner for two minutes about this. Uh, and then the second part is one minute discussing one more question, usually connected to this topic. So tip six uh, is for the first two minutes. Listen to and look at your partner. Intervene naturally in what he or she is saying and agree and disagree, motivating your opinions. For example, I like your idea of, because, or I think what you said about is absolutely right. I agree. Uh, encourage your partner to interact equally in the discussion by saying, what do you think? Do you agree? Uh, do you have a similar opinion? Um, so you have to, yes, encourage your partner to um, interact in the conversation. Tip seven, don't dominate. Uh, so you have to encourage your uh, partner, but if you feel they are dominating you and they don't let you speak, you must interrupt politely and say, sorry, may I intervene? And occasionally refer back to things you said earlier. For example, as you said before, don't forget to ask questions because it's a kind of conversation. It's not a unilateral discussion. Here is an example. So which one shall we start with? Well, let's talk about, in my opinion, that's just what I was thinking. However, I suppose so. Okay, let's move on to now. What do you think about it? Maybe, sorry to interrupt you, but I think, uh, I disagree. So we're both in favor of, yes, great, that's agreed. So tip seven is how to, um, yes, practically uh, share the conversation so that you discuss each of the five points and come to some uh, common agreement on um, what you think is um, a good way of communicating. Now, uh, tip eight, in the final minute, uh, you will be asked a question and you have to uh, discuss uh, um, the question. Uh, very often this question is something like, um, which is the most important way of communicating or the best way of communicating of these five uh, ways. Now, I recommend never to start with what you think is the most important because if the other person agrees with you, uh, then you have nothing more to say. So never start with the most important, always start with the least important, giving reasons so that you can then uh, discuss a few others before you get to the one you think is the most important. And that will be the one that you uh, then, um, yes, uh, agree on. And so you will have filled the whole minute. So here's an example. Um, I think giving a lecture definitely isn't the most important way of communicating because, what do you think? I totally agree. In fact, I think, I also believe that, right? Absolutely. So maybe is the best. Yes, it is. And as you said, it's... Uh, so this is a way of, um, yes, filling the one minute in an intelligent way. Now, part four is a four-minute discussion in which the examiner will ask both of you a question about a topic related to part three. You have to discuss it together, but then answer the examiner. For example, do you think we have trouble communicating face-to-face -face nowadays? Do we prefer to communicate through some kind of medium, such as a phone or something like that? So tip nine is, again, listen carefully to the instructions and in doubt, ask, would you mind repeating the question, please? 
discuss the question with your partner and then tell the examiner the answer. Do you have anything to say about that? Did I forget anything? Always explain your answers. Yes, um, I think nowadays we like to hide behind a phone, computer or letter because it makes us feel less vulnerable. Never say I don't know because it gives a very bad impression. Instead, gain time by saying, that's a good question. Let me think, perhaps... Show interest in what your partner is saying and intervene naturally to agree or disagree, motivating your opinions uh, by saying something like, that's exactly what I was thinking, I see your point, or I'm not sure I agree. Don't you think that maybe on the other hand, so use a variety of vocabulary and grammatical structure, structures too. Uh, for example, speaking to people face to face is more interesting, but you could also say communicating with people face to face is more challenging, or you could use a more complicated structure and say, if I had to discuss something important with a customer, I would find it more embarrassing face to face than if I could do so in a teleconference. So, um, yes, make sure you discuss uh, this uh, part carefully and um, give uh, the examiner the answer then to the question you discussed. Uh, finally, tip 10, um, re leave the room politely by saying goodbye, don't chatter in your own language or giggle um, and don't ask them how the exam went because they won't be able to tell you anyhow. So the best is just to politely say goodbye, thank them and leave the room. Okay, so let's summarize the last five tips. Tip, um, sorry, yes. Tip six refers to part three, uh, in which you um, have two minutes to discuss uh, something, and you must intervene naturally, showing interest, agreeing and disagreeing with your partner, without dominating him and without letting yourself be dominated. So that was tip six and tip seven. Tip eight, never start in the final minute answering with what is the most important thing because um, then you'll have nothing else to talk about if your partner agrees. Rather start with something less important so that gives you more scope for conversation and end with the most important. Then um, tip, sorry, um, tip um, Eight. Yes, sorry. Tip nine, uh, listen carefully to the instructions, always explain your answers and uh, tell the examiner your answer. And finally, leave the room politely saying goodbye and only speaking English. So I hope this was useful for you. And if you want, uh, I'll be also uh, adding a link to the video uh, where you can um, connect to some resources which are very good, which will give you some example sentences you can learn. Uh, if you click on here, you can also download a PDF, uh, which is this document. Uh, okay, so I look forward to seeing you in the next video and hope that this was particularly helpful for you to pass your speaking part of the FCE exam. Thank you very much. Goodbye.